Hello, I'm JW. Uh, this time I'm going to have a look at another motor starter. And this one is for the electric drill, which you've seen in several other videos. Uh, we'll just have a look at the starter in this one. Now, this is not a new item, it's a used one, but uh, nevertheless, it's a bit more appropriate than some of the plastic rubbish you can get these days. So, here it is. I have actually painted this black. It originally was a rather dull grey, so I've uh, been repainted there. But uh, we'll have a look inside and see how this one works. And it's, it's uh, fairly different to the other one in that this one is in a much better condition. And this also has the no volt release in it. Of course, the other one did not have. So here's the item. And so originally this was a rather dull grey, as these things are. I've just painted it with some black paint, which was left over from some of the other items which were painted black. And we can see inside here, this was the original grey, a bit of corrosion here and there as well, which was the same on the outside. And this one still has the instructions or the wiring diagrams in the bottom, so that's uh, fine there, although these things are reasonably straightforward to do. Now the front cover here has the buttons in it, and these are just basically plastic, spring-loaded there, so it's start and of course stop, and you'll see the stop one sticks out further, the start one is flush, so if you're just going to be pressing them, it's going to be the stop that gets pressed first before the start one. Screws there which are captive, they've got little washers to stop them falling out of the case, and so the outside was that grey colour. Obviously it's now black on the outside. And this is what got inside, and the buttons actually just press on these two things here, so this is the start over this side, and then the stop over here. Now this whole assembly can easily be taken out, I've already loosened the screws for that, so we'll have a look at that uh, in a moment. And then this case here is just basically a metal box here, and again it's the same grey, made in England, which gives you an idea how old this is, certainly not made uh, recently. Uh, sort of plastic seal around the edge there, so the case uh, goes over the top to keep dust and whatever out. Not specifically supposed to be waterproof, but uh, at least uh, keeps it clean inside. Now so this was a used item, and it did come with a hole in the top and some manky old thing attached, and another hole in the bottom. So what I've done here, I've basically knocked out the other hole as well, put in these two metal plugs here so it looks a bit more decent and they both match. And then at the bottom here, just taken out the other one of those, so I've got these two glands, so that's where the flexes will go in. So basically we power in on one of them, and then of course uh, power going out to the motor. And I haven't painted the inside, I mean there wasn't really a great deal of point in doing that. Uh, we've just got the two bits at the side for the lid. And then at the bottom here, I've just got a stud, and a single screw which the base place just fits onto, so it just slots over the pieces here and here, and then the screw just tightens down to lock this in position. Now here's the mechanism for this, and we can see on the front here it's got the same thermal arrangement as the very old one that we saw in the other video. And again this is a three-phase device, so we've got the three phases would be up here. So as with the other one, when the motor is actually on power, the uh, power will come in on this side, so phases one, two, and three. That will be pulled down. Power goes through here, and then via these terminals, it actually goes through the heating core here, returns back up here, and then these three are where the motor would actually connect. So they're basically in series with the motor. And as I say, though it's a three phase device, you can just use uh, obviously for single phase as well if you wanted to. And of course, unlike the other device, these are all in decent condition, and the insulation underneath is all intact, so clearly in a much better state. So just as with the other one, when these heat up, these strips underneath will bend, they're made of uh, two metals, or they're bimetallic, and then when they bend enough, it will basically push this bar upwards like that. And then we can see on the side here that there's a little pin there, which is an electrical contact, so in the normal position it's like that, but as this moves outwards and these bend, it will actually just move this and basically break the connection here. And uh, the actual position of when this breaks is determined by this piece on this end, which you see can be adjusted to various positions. And we can see here the actual uh, amp rating, which is 0 to 4 in this case. And that's fine for the motor we've got, which is about 2.5 amps. And this one you can actually adjust, and this little pointer there. And uh, if you just turn the knob here, you can just adjust it from 4 all the way down to, say, 2 or whatever's appropriate for the motor that you've got. And that's just moving that mechanically so that uh, the position at which this disconnects here is altered, so as this moves up it takes a lot less movement of this to break the circuit, whereas if this comes down, then again I've got to move this further because of course it's already moving down in that position, so it requires a further amount of bending there to disconnect this. 
Now the buttons on the case actually press onto these things here, so this piece here is the start button, that just presses there, and then this is the stop button here, and that just uh, presses here. And the arrangement here is that the start button and the stop button are both momentary switches, and this one is a normally open, so in other words there's no connection when it's in this state, and when you press the button it connects two things together, and the stop button is the exact opposite, so it's connected all the time, but when you actually press that, it's breaking a connection there. Now we can actually see that using the multimeter here. So it beeps when it's connected. So if we just place these on the top terminals. Then we'll find that uh, that's actually connected there. We'll place that there and then press this. See that then pressing that will actually break the circuit. And it's the same thing with the trip bar here. So that's in the closed position. And when that's disconnected, you see it will break the circuit. So that is essentially the same as pressing the stop button. So whether you're pressing it manually or whether this bar is actually moved due to the actual thermal things, it uh, disconnects it in either case. And the other button here is, uh, say, a, a press to make. So if we just check between these two, turn my touch on the uh, front there for that one. So just check those at the moment. Again, there's no connection there. But uh, if I then press the button, then we should find that those will actually connect when the button is pressed, and that is used to energise the coil to basically get the thing working initially. Now on this side we can see the coil, and I've chosen this one because this happened to be a 240 volt coil. You can just about see the label through the back there. So though this is three phase, the coil will be connected between one phase and neutral, and uh, that's somewhat different to the 400 volt coils you can get, which are then connected between any two phases. Of course you can't use those for single phase because there's no 400 volts available. So all this is is a big coil of insulated wire. Now we can see the two ends of that coil coming off here going through to the terminals on the top. And when this is energised this turns into a magnet. And you see it's got this big metal frame around the bottom here and also at the top. You see that's quite a substantial thing there. So when this is on these turn into magnets. And then these pieces are attracted to each other which essentially pulls them together like that. And in doing that, it pulls down this thing on the top. And we can see in here there's the connection points on either side. I'll see uh, three of those there. So when that's in the default position, there's no connection. When the thing is energised and the magnet turned on, it will pull that down and then it will connect between the two sides. So then the power will go through to the motor connections. And we've also got this other contact here. And this is the one which keeps the coil energised once you've released the start button. So pressing the start button will temporarily energise the coil so it can pull down on the magnet. And then once it's done that, this contact here basically keeps the coil permanently energised. You can see the, some of the connections coming up to the top here. And that way it will stay energised the whole time. But of course if there's a power failure, the coil will be de-energised. This will spring up. And then here, because there's no more any connection, then when the power is restored, it won't automatically restart. You will have to actually go and press the start button, which again will uh, temporarily energise it so it can pull down and then make this contact on the side. Now, say fairly straightforward things, they do look a bit uh, intimidating, but uh, not really. So essentially it's the motor on this side, either all three, or in the case of a single phase, you can just use one or possibly loop them through if you actually wanted to. That is actually detailed in the... Uh, instructions in the top here, so you've basically got your options here for there's two overloads in circuit or all three should you want to wire it like that. So it's essentially just a set of switches on the top, so it's uh, three switches for the power and an extra one here just for the coil contacts. And then we've just got a few extra terminals here to connect the various wires and things together. And these black wires just come through from the bottom on the coil. And then this other one here actually goes through and goes to the start button there. So of course that's what temporarily energises it when you just push in the button over there. And then to stop it, it's simply a question of disconnecting the power to the coil. And that's done by the switch over here, which is either just pressing your stop button, or in the case of the overload, it just opens the contact on the side here. So in any case, starting is always going to be via the button here, just to temporarily energise it, then it will hold itself in place. If it's manually stopped, it's pressing this one, or if it's overloaded, it's going to be breaking the connection here. And if there's a power failure, then of course it will be de-energised, and of course quickly won't start again unless you come along and specifically press the button. 
And that's pretty much all there is to these. And I say you've just got this adjustment mechanism here, which is just adjusting the angle of the bar here to determine the exact current it will trip at. Say 0 to 4 in this case, but you can get various other ratings, of course, for larger motors. And I say this can be wired uh, outside of the case, so you bring your wires through here, obviously attach them to this, and then this thing just basically clips into the case over those like that. Tighten the screw, and then the top case just goes over the front. And of course your buttons then will just line up with the two indents there. So when it's on then it's just a question of pressing the appropriate button for whatever function you want. And there's just a look at the uh, label inside. So look there at the motor starter, and uh, if you buy a new one these days they're generally in a plastic box, although some metal ones can be had, but they're all basically the same inside. You've got the thermal element for tripping out when there's too much current there, and basically it's too much current over a period of time. And you've also of course got the actual contactor as well, which will cut off and stop it restarting automatically in the event of a power failure. And uh, that particular one only cost uh, £5, and a bit of postage as well, so it was actually £9 in total. To buy a new uh, MEM or an Eaton one would have actually cost uh, nearly £80, £90 sort of area, and even a cheap sort of no-brand plastic boxed one, again still looking at about £50, so uh, considerably cheaper than that. And although that's not from the 1940s, it's probably from the 1970s, it's certainly a lot better than some plastic case item, and so it'll batch a lot better with the black colouring. So we're seeing that fit on the drill at a later date, but until then, thanks for watching.